Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. I'd give a reward any day just to find out, just give me some peace of mind. Years after her house burned to the ground, a Wheatland woman continues to search for answers as to what happened. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Stephanie is off. That fire eight years ago in Wheatland, North Dakota, was originally investigated as arson. Later, investigators would say there was no evidence to show what may have started the fire. Today, the owner says she's willing to pay $2,000 to find the person who she says caused her dreams to go up in smoke. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson has the story you will only see here on Valley News Live. I was in such a depressed state, I didn't know what to do. I'm kind of by myself, so I didn't know who to talk to. Gay Swanson is paying off a $100,000 loan for her dream house, a house that's been gone for years. My the fire department came out here, and that's just from Castleton. That's only eight miles. It was already in the basement. It had burned that fast. This big house burned that fast. The whole thing was already in the basement. So they couldn't do nothing to save it. Not even one stick they saved. Swanson never had it insured and never moved in. She was remodeling, so there was no furnace or electricity inside, which is why she believes someone started the fire. I want to know who did it. I want to know who did it and why. Why would you do that to my house? Why? What did I ever do? What started as an arson investigation in 2007 soon turned into unanswered questions. Only a month after the fire, the Cass County Sheriff's Department declared the case inactive because they had no witnesses or evidence to prove how the fire started. Just find a person that burnt it down, just to know. A cry for help unlikely to be solved since the statute of limitations ran out in 2010. Too many years, I wish I would have been stronger so I could have brought this up sooner. While she's paying off bills for an empty lot, she's willing to pay for answers for peace of mind. Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. If you have any information, you're asked to email Swanson. We have her address on our website, valleynewslive.com. Go there and simply click on this story. And if you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline, 701-237-6576. Do so and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case. How wonderful of a day has it been? Well, good enough to break a record. Lisa joins us with the details on that and a sneak peek at tonight's weather. Lisa? Thanks, Mike. Yeah, we didn't just break one record. We broke a few of them in the Valley. 58 degrees was the high in Fargo, and that breaks the old record of 55 set back in 1902. Uh, 58 degrees in Grand Forks, that also broke a record of 57. And over in Jamestown, a tie of 56 degrees. All of us very warm today in the mid 40s to upper 50s. And our temperatures remain warm this evening. We're at 56 degrees in Fargo, 57 in Grand Forks. Should be a gorgeous night to get out and enjoy this weather. Temperatures will stay in the 50s for a couple more hours before they start to dip into the 40s at that point. You might need a light jacket. It's funny to say that in early March, but that's true. And we've got more light jacket, short sleeve, maybe even flip-flop weather yeah. for some folks coming up. Great consolation prize. That's right. All right, thanks. It'll only be a matter of time before orange cones line certain roads and drivers will be forced to take detours. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop dug into one of the big construction projects impacting drivers in the FM area this summer. Ashley? The Second Street North construction project, which will begin, will start impacting dri drivers beginning in July, will impact those who use First Avenue North and also the bridge going into Moorhead. A local cab driver says the impact will be more costly to his customers. For me, you know, it isn't going to impact me as much other than it's going to take me more time. But for the people that I carry, especially the low-income people that we're bringing over from areas in Moorhead like Parkview Towers, you know, their cab fare is going to go up a buck and a half, two dollars every trip. Taxi driver Brent Hart says he understands the need for construction, but feels for those impacted. You have people with the least amount of uh, funds available who are going to be impacted the most. Hart says he does plan to use the 12th Avenue North Bridge when the construction begins. 
Fargo City engineer Jeremy Gordon says this project alone will impact over 27,000 drivers. That's a pretty good number. So that'll, our detour route will be NP Avenue for the summer. As the construction season begins to heat up, make sure you pay attention to the detours so you don't end up with a fender bender. Many people think that this construction project is due to the new city hall, but that is actually incorrect. It is actually actually due to permanent flood protection. In, Sa in North Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. 13th Avenue South near West Acres Mall was a project that was supposed to be done this year, but the city tells us they don't have enough money this year and pushed that project back another year. The jury trial for Aaron Canodal, the 2014 North Dakota Teacher of the Year, will start in just a couple of weeks. Canodal is a West Fargo English teacher accused of having a sexual relationship with one of his students in 2009. The judge has decided that Canodal's polygraph results will not be used as evidence in the trial. The judge will also te allow testimony from a handwriting expert that reviewed notes allegedly from Canodal. Canodal's attorney, Bob Hoy, questioned the training of the expert. That anybody that just studies the home course is not going to be an expert allowed to testify and offer opinion testimony in a court of law. All experts, no matter who they are and what topic it is, start somewhere. He's at the beginning of his career in providing handwriting analysis. That trial will start on March 24th. Investigators say the bus driver was at fault for a fatal train school bus collision near Laramore, North Dakota in January. The 62-year-old bus driver, Max Danner, was killed along with 17-year-old student Cassidy Sandstrom. The Highway Patrol says both were ejected from the bus during the crash. Ten other students on the bus were injured. The patrol says the school bus was braking hard when the front end of the bus slid onto the railroad track. It was hit by a BNSF train traveling 43 miles per hour just 1.5 to 2 seconds later. The bus did not stop short of entering the railroad tracks right away. He hit the brakes and slid up on the tracks? Yes, he did. He was on the brakes. He, the brakes were engaged and the bus slid up onto the railroad tracks. A any indication that he had passed out or had any medical issue? Uh, no, there is not. There's no indications based on the autopsy through the medical examiner and based on our interviews. Uh, there's no information that leads us to believe that it was a medical event. Fisher adds that videotape of the crash shows Danner was upright in the driver's seat. And authorities say after interviewing students, they didn't find anything that would indicate there was a major disturbance that could have distracted him. The Highway Patrol also says the investigation is now complete and there are no pending charges. A startling number of felons are on the loose in the state of Minnesota. The Star Tribune is reporting that last year there were a total of 5,180 warrants issued for Minnesota fugitives. Of those warrants, there were only 361 arrests. Also, there's been a crackdown on sex offenders. Of the 2003 warrants issued for level 3 sex offenders, 200 arrests were made. Two North Dakota lawmakers from opposite sides of the aisle are working together to get a bill passed requiring doctors to notify women if they have dense breast tissue. Representatives Kathy Hawken and Pam Anderson agree that the bill needs to be passed in the Senate. Hawkins says if you had a mammogram, you get a letter afterwards telling you what the status is. The bill would add a line in that letter telling you that you have dense breast tissue, which 40% of women do. Last week, the bill received a do not pass recommendation from the Senate Human Services Committee. Opponents are concerned about placing mandates on doctors in the state of North Dakota. As we get into the spring, you might notice your ash boulevard trees may need some help. The Fargo Forestry Department is continuing its removal and replacement of these trees. The removal program helps protect the urban forest from the spread of emerald ash borer. Consider contacting the city if your tree is close or under a power line, if the tree has a thinned canopy, if it's a heavy seed producer, and if the tree is starting to show signs of structural tissues. Removals of the tree are typically completed in the summer. The stump is ground out in the fall and the tree would then be replaced the following spring. If you need any information on this, uh, go to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on our hot button. And a favorite spring activity of the Valley is Cleanup Week, which is just around the corner. Monday, May 4th, marks the start for Cleanup Week this week, this year, and a chance for you to throw away large items such as couches and appliances for absolutely no charge. The items must be out on the street by 7 in the morning. Now, here are some things to remember. 
the city of Fargo would like you to separate items. And for an explanation of separation, go to our website and click on the hot button. Do not put out any building materials and limit your appliances to two per household. And finally, any electronics such as TVs or computers, those won't be collected. Remember to like Valley News Live on our Facebook page. You can do so by following the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. Later on Valley News Live at 6, the best curlers in the country are here and competing. And it's looking and feeling like spring here in the valley. We've got more of that weather coming up in your forecast.